but I think all change occurs very quickly. Uh, my favorite example of this is, uh, it's a joke. Uh, what do you want people to say about you after your, at your funeral? And the answer is, look, he's moving. <laughs> now, the change that occurs in your mind when you hear this, the, the punchline is a totally different picture, totally different conclusion, totally different meaning. I had the good fortune of spending a week with Steve Andreas as he talked about his career, both professional and personal, with passion and humor. Anybody who is persuasive, yes. which includes a lot of uh, salespeople, a lot of politicians and so on, uses NLP language patterns. And that's, if you think about it, psychotherapy is largely sales. Mm. You're trying to sell people a different way of viewing things, a different way of responding to things. In some ways, that's the toughest sales there is. I didn't know about that until quite a bit later. I was about, I was almost 10 when he uh, suicided. And I didn't find out about it until I was 21. Your mother didn't tell you? No, that's one thing she lied to me about. And uh, it's probably a good idea. I think I could handle it a lot better at 21 than at, at 9. That tragic history with Bandler and the, the murder and the accusation of uh, murder in the mid-80s. And so I'm, I'm just asking you, what do you remember about that? Uh, because I know it had an effect probably on you all as co-workers, as collaborators, but also on the whole NLP movement at the time. Yeah, that was that good PR. <laughs> yeah, that's where I met Connie Ray. I was doing a morning Tai Chi session and she came to it. One is I would challenge the assumption that if you know how something was caused, you know how to cure it. Which I think is a widespread assumption in psychotherapy. Go into the history and find out what's going on. It's a good thing I'm not running the world. <laughs> good thing you don't have that magic wand. <laughs> it's a good thing. I probably make a lot of mistakes.